Okay, hello and welcome back. Today is going to be part three of building an AI computer improviser from scratch. And today, again, baby steps, we're going to add um, analysis for the live input. And we're going to then try to match that live input with grains from the uh, recorded corpus. So this is something that um, it, Flucoma is very good at doing. It's sort of one of the more obvious things to do with the Flucoma library. And this is, again, sort of the end result um, of what we're working towards today. So you can see up here, if I zoom in, I have the live analysis. Now I already have Chroma here in 19 um, different parts. I have the MFCCs here. And then I have Melbands as a third one here. So today we're just going to focus on MFCCs and we'll expand it out after. But I've already recorded myself making trumpet noises, noisy noises, and some, what was the other one? Oh yeah, some bop bop bops. And so now if I try to match with that in real time, uh, if I do a trumpet sound, Or, or you see it sort of matches what I'm doing back in real time. Um, so a basic kind of matching interaction. So that's what we're building towards today. So let's set this aside um, and bring up the project that we're actually working on. So first things first, uh, we are going to need um, the input processing. So we've looked at, oh yeah, that's why I opened this. So if we look in the MFCC analysis, we have our buff.mfcc, fluid.buff.mfcc. So now we wanna use just fluid.mfcc uh, for the real-time analysis. Uh, I'm just going to also um, switch the settings on this a little bit to what through trial and error I found for myself to work best for matching. Um, so that which is, I want 13 coefficients and 20 uh, uh, bands. So frequency bands. So basically the number of mel bands for each coefficient. Uh, and then I want to have FFT settings uh, 512. So pretty snappy. Um, and we're going to want to have all of those uh, known. So while, while we're at it, let's just go into the, to this one and switch it as well. So that we know both, both of these will work properly. Uh, great. Okay. So let's make a fluid dot M, uh, MFCC object. We're going to give it these sex, uh, these um, arguments, but of course we don't have a, uh, a source because it's not a buffer. Uh, and number of channels is not necessary either, I believe. Um, so it'll just be like that. So if I put my ADC into there, it will be spitting out the data here. So it's gonna send it out for every single, um, every single um, FFT frame. So we have a rapid amount of data that changes uh, quickly. So we're going to want to uh, smooth this a little bit. So to smooth this, we can use this handy tool called fluid.stats. Um, and we want it for uh, 13 inputs. And we'll want um, the history size. Again, through trial and error, I found that 32 is a good amount for matching. 16, 32, 64. If you're matching long held notes, then 64 is probably better. Um, great. So now if we want to visualize this, um, we can use a multi-slider. I'm just going to copy and paste in the multi-slider from my other project so we get the coloring. Okay, there. There's our, there are our MSCCs. Ooh, all right, so they're reacting to us nicely. Um, great. So what we're going to need um, in order to do live matching 
um, is to uh, stick these in a buffer. So for that, we will need a fluid dot um, list to buff. Um, and we'll give it a destination. We'll call it MFCC uh, MFCC um, input or MFCC. Yeah, no MFCC underscore live. It's probably a good name for it. And um, just best practice that I've learned is to uh, use the defer message before the list to buff. Oh, and let's make the buffer. So the buffer we called MFCC underscore live, and we know it's going to have 13 data points or 13 samples. So if we go into here and now we open up this buffer, we can see that it's updating. Now, um, this is non normalized, non standardized data. So it's going to be higher and over one and, and lower than negative one. So it looks a little wonky in the buffer, but we have a better idea of it here. And if we use the inspector, we can see the multi sliders between negative 60 and 60 for the range of the MFCCs. Um, okay, great. So now we'll need to perform the matching. So let's go back in here. And uh, one thing that will be important is to have the same standardiz standardization function um, on the, applied to this buffer as to the data set. And we also are going to need a KD tree that's fit to that data, which we don't have. Right now we just have the KD trees for our grid and our two-dimensional reduction. This standardization we're going to need uh, to use again. So I'll just copy that out here. Uh, and then we're also going to need to fit a KD tree to that data. So let's make a trigger uh, bang uh, symbol and send that to that. Um, for the data set, we're going to need something very similar to this here. Oops, actually, I'll take all of this. Again, this is not, it's not really necessary to put in another data set, but I like to be able to sort of see and check what I'm doing. So symbol and dump. So if I do that now, yep, great. As 3D calls. Oh, of course, we did the analysis before changing the settings there. So that will, that will change once we redo the analysis. We don't need to bother to do that now. Um, great. And so now we'll need a KD tree. So again, we'll want to fit um, this to the KD tree. We're going to need a K nearest message eventually. So let's just go ahead and do that. And the KD tree, just like this, is going to need to go out to, um, wait, hold on. All right, no, we'll need well, I'm confused. Do we need multiple of the, these objects? In fact, we don't. They could all go to the same one. Hmm. Maybe it would be neater to all go to the same k nearest rotation. Yeah, let's do that. So this goes to here. This goes to here. This can come down a bit. Let's clean up our wires. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit neater like that. Okay. So I'm going to redo the analysis. Now we have 13 data points, good. And this should be fit as well. Um, okay, so let's add another input here. So this is going to be our uh, matching. Uh, matching live input. And this uh, just like here, we have we have a fit transform. Now the message we need is transform point. So it's the standardization um, table is already made, and now we're going to run our data through and transform it. So we call that MFCC underscore live. Uh, 
Great, so we'll send the transform point message to the standardization, and then that will send out, generate the buffer and do the buffer management automatically. And so we just do k nearest to the buffer that it uh, that it creates automatically. Um, and it may just be as simple as that. Let's see. Ooh, wrong point size. Oh yes, of course we didn't rename this KD tree, so we're gonna call this number. I'm just gone. I think the KD tree we can just name like that because it's really the full data set there. I'll do underscore full. All right, so we're gonna need to refit this. Um, let's just redo the analysis. Great. What do I have in here? Okay. Cool. Now. Okay. Let's test this out. So let's record ourselves. I'll do the same thing. I'll do like trumpet noises, noisy sounds, and then some boops and bops. And we'll do the analysis. Okay. Now let's bring in, let me make a little bit in space here. Do a metro. And our speed, let's just do, that's fine. On and off. And into our live input. Great. So there it is. Um, so for, to expand it over to the slices, uh, it's, we'd be doing the exact same thing. Um, okay, so that's going to be it for now. In the next video, what we'll do is uh, expand this out to be uh, not just MFCCs, but also chroma and mel bands, and perhaps other analyses as well, um, to sort of fully flesh out our uh, live uh, listening, or our machine listening. Okay, so that's it.